Good morning, River Hills Church. We're so happy to have you here with us in-house and online. We want you to sing with us. We're going to put up the words, worship God together with us. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord our God. He reign forever. Our hope, our strong belief. Yeah, 
bend our knees O oh, Spirit come make us humble We turn our eyes from evil things O oh, Lord we cast down our idols to give us clean hands give us pure hearts let us not lift our souls to another give us clean hands give us pure hearts let us not lift our souls to another oh god let us be a generation that seeks that seeks your generation that sees, sees your face, O God of Jacob. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees, O Spirit, come make us humble. things oh lord we cast down our idols so give us clean hands give us pure hearts let us not lift our souls to another give us clean hands give us pure hearts let us not lift our souls to another. Oh God, let us be a generation that sees, sees your face. Oh God, Jacob. Oh God, let us be a generation that sees, sees your face. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Oh God, let us be a generation that seeks seeks your face oh god jacob oh god let us be a generation that sees that seeks your face oh god
Christ, Lord, let them rise. Open up the sky. said this last time but it when we sing it to you think about what we're saying and then you have to respond and it makes you in your mind and let it sink down to your heart do you believe this do you believe what we're saying so if you do respond with Bruce and Amber Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. Do you know that all the dark won't stop? The 
light from getting through. We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? We do. Is all creation groaning? Is a new creation coming? Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah that conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Of all blessing and honor and glory, is he worthy of this? He is. Does the Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move among us? And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those he loves? He does. Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. From every people and tribe, every nation and tongue, he has made us a kingdom and priest to God to reign with the Son. Is He worthy? Is He worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is He worthy? Is He worthy? Is He worthy of Father, your love is worthy of our praise. Your sacrifice is worthy of our praise. Your creation that you made and gave to us, your generosity is worthy of our praise. Father, you are worthy of all of our praise, even our very lives, Father. You're worthy of all of it. And God, what blows my mind, what blows my very spirit is that 
you give it all back. Father, we benefit from worshiping you. The worship we give to you comes back and edifies us and who we are with you. That we're your children, that we are those that you love, Father. You are so worthy of every moment of our praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness. I pray that someone here today that needs to feel that they are worthy and that they are loved. I pray that, Father, we could be your hands and feet and love that person and show them their worth. And let us walk out these doors today, Father, and let us show the world who you are and be your hands and feet. In your name, amen. Here we go. Why is Dennis wearing an apron? Because Dennis is wearing a white shirt. Someone said, oh, are you going to be talking about servanthood today? And, uh, and someone else uh, ordered a chef salad. Uh, and those of you who know about the Gathering Place Cafe, they ordered a hilster with, with sausage. So in any case, um, no, it's because I'm wearing a white shirt and the people who run the cameras hate when I wear a white shirt. And apparently those of you at home, when I'm wearing a white shirt, it looks like my head is floating decapitated from my body. <laughs> you see pants and you see a head and there's nothing in between. Um, but in any case, here we are. Hey, we have, uh, we have been this summer, as I like to say, dialing it up. Uh, and we, we did not dial back this summer at all. We, we jumped into a teaching series uh, on a book that uh, in the last few years has been revamped from what some of you saw maybe 20 years ago, a book entitled The Purpose Driven Life and retitled What on Earth Am I Here For? And whether you've ever asked that question of yourself, I know I have. I look in the mirror and uh, there are times, you know, what, what am I doing? What am I here for? And if you're going through it, uh, you know exactly what that's about. I need, well, I usually have that piano bench over here, but I see too many instruments in the way, so I'm just going to grab a chair. And that will be my stand for today. There we go. Oh, did anyone happen to watch the Notre Dame game yesterday? I only watched half. It got a little boring. 42 to 3, for those of you who didn't see it. Uh, over Navy, but be that as it may, welcome to the college football season. It started yesterday in Dublin, Ireland, uh, where, where Notre Dame likes to kick things off. Ha, ha, ha. And uh, uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I went to grad school there and didn't really like football until I got up one morning on a Saturday, and Debbie and I swore when we looked out our, our garden apartment windows at the toll road off-ramp that there must have been some kind of a hazmat uh, issue on the toll road because all the traffic was being diverted off. And it turns out that's what happens every football Saturday as uh, all roads point in toward Notre Dame Stadium. But in any case, uh, for those of you who have been uh, reading this book, this week you should have wrapped up. Yesterday would have been the, uh, the, the last day. There are two extra days in the revamped book, which, uh, are, which are great. But regardless of whether you have been reading on, on track or not, uh, it, it really doesn't matter. What's important is that you jump into this thing. Uh, and we've been scratching the surface over these last several weeks uh, through these messages introducing each uh, chapter as we've gone along. But now here at the end of this series, there is an obvious question. So let's say that you've asked the question, what on earth am I here for? And you've heard over the course of these last several weeks, five purposes for which you have been created. The question has to be, so now what? What do you, what do, you do with that? And one of the things that, uh, that we asked when we first started River Hills is, what's our purpose as a church going to be? And uh, we, we determined that we were not going to be the moral police. There are some churches, you know, that like to be the moral police. We, de we determined that we were not going to be an entertainment venue. There are some churches that are entertainment venues. 
we determined that we were not going to be an educational institution. There are some churches that are purely about educating people in the Word of God. Now, some might say, well, what's wrong with the last one? I, I get the other ones, and maybe some of you are probably disagreeing that uh, maybe we should be the moral police, or maybe we do do a lot of entertainment, or whatever it is, but, you know, what's, what's wrong with the last one? And what's wrong is simply this, what Jesus says in John 13. Jesus, in fact, did put on a towel and a smock in John 13, and he washed his disciples' feet, and he taught them what they were to be doing in the world. And he encouraged them to, to follow in his example. And he says this at the end, Now that you know these things, will you say these last words with me? God will bless you for doing them. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. You know, one of the things that we've uh, done during this series is we've introduced uh, objects and asked, what on earth is this here for? And uh, this is one of those things that, uh, that my family has from time to time asked, what on earth is this here for? And I will uh, I'll highlight it, if I can, by, by shining a light through it. Um, I don't know if that shows up or not. But... Uh, what, what on earth is this here for? Uh, some people have uh, stubbed their toe on it um, because, do you remember Aunt Gussie's doorstop from the very first time that we talked? Uh, remember the first Heisman Trophy ever won ended up in Aunt Gussie's dining room? Do, do, do you remember that? Well, this uh, was an object used by my grandfather who made tombstones in Chicago. He was a saxophone artist, by the way, David. And uh, when he wasn't making enough money doing that gig, um, he was also an artist with his hands, and he carved tombstones. And if you go to some of the graveyards in the north side of Chicago, you can see beautiful ivy work and flowers. And uh, this is one of his more severe tools when he had to split a large stone. You know what this is now? This is a, a sledge, but it's missing something. It's not a hammer, is it? Why? Because it's suffering from something missing. Let me just take a little riff on that for, for a second. You see, this isn't the... Heisman Trophy, but it has been a, a doorstop. And, and Jesus says in that passage that you may know these things and God will bless you for doing them. I might know what this thing was. I might know what it, what it can do. But if it's not doing it, it's not serving its purpose for which it was originally created. Now, I have to confess that this, uh, the end of this week, for one reason or another, I felt some of that. I felt a certain dis-ease in my own person. Have you, have you ever been there? You feel uncomfortable maybe with, sometimes you can't even put your finger on it. Sometimes you know exactly what it is. There's this dis-ease with who you are or what you're doing or what you're thinking or, or whatever it might be. You know, the, the human body is made up of, uh, I believe it's 11 systems. Are, are, are you familiar with, with systems thinking about the body? What, what, what's one of the systems in the body? The respiratory system? Circulatory system? The... The urinary system, the digestive system, I like that, the nervous system. 
How about this one? I don't even know if I say it correctly. The integumentary system. Integumentary system. Did I say that right for those of you who know it? You know what that means? It's the single largest organ system in the body. And it's protective. And if you don't, there you go. It's the skin. There, there, there are these 11 systems. And when those systems are, are working well, we feel well. But when, we, when those systems are, are out of whack, when they are not balanced, when, when one might be calling for, for more red blood cells than anything else in the, in the body, when, when, when things are not as they should be, the body is in a state of dis-ease, also known as disease. And really, when Jesus talks about being blessed, that is, blessed God will bless you for doing these things that you now know. That, that, that word, as you've heard me say this many times, makarios in, in scripture, means happiness or, or a deep-seated joy. And when the body is functioning as it should, the body is happy. When our hearts and when our minds and when our spirits are functioning as they should and all systems are working together, we feel this, this blessedness, this happiness, this joy. But when they're not, when, when, when something is out of sync and it doesn't fit where it used to fit, we feel dis-ease. Some of you have been there. Any number of reasons for feeling that way, right? Maybe you struggle with depression. Maybe you have lost a loved one. Maybe you have a relational breakdown. Maybe you're looking at how you've managed uh, your, your life up till now or your finances up till now or some, some relationships up until now and, and you realize that, that, that there is this, this blockage. Well, Jesus doesn't want us there. God doesn't want us there. And that's why Jesus says in John 13, now that you know these things, now just stop right there for a second. This is the big paradox of being a pastor. One, because I make myself accountable to God. This is why scripture says, not many of you should aspire to being teachers because God will hold you to a higher standard. But the other side of that paradox is when I, when I teach these things, now it's kind of like saying, okay, the ball's in your court. Now, now you're responsible for the things that I've taught. I want to say hi to some of our online parishioners who are with us here today, Sandy and Uli, who uh, just prior to, to the, the, the service said, you know, thank you so much for directing our attention, redirecting our attention to, to this book because it's, it's so good. And I don't know if the new edition is that much better or if we're in a better place or what it is, but, but there's so much work to be done. I don't know if those who have been following along or maybe have only been listening on Sunday morning, it really doesn't matter. <clears throat> but maybe you've seen that there's so much work to be done. Now that you know these things. Okay, just in case you don't know those things, uh, let's take out a pencil and a piece of paper, please, because this is like a pop quiz. I used to hate those words in college. And I can see some of you who are compliant doing it. Thank you very much, Amy. You're the only one in the room that I see right now. Everybody else, arms folded. The heck I will. But let, let me review for you what we've learned. And one of the things that you can do with this book, okay, there are five purposes. And something that's helped me in, in digesting this, because... I don't like all of Rick Warren's turns of phrase in this book. Uh, I, don't, I don't even like listening to Rick Warren preach. He preaches at a level that I, I just don't appreciate. But I love his writing. And I, I love the content. I, I really do think that the Holy Spirit was guiding him as, as he wrote these words. And he's said that in, 
in talking about this book how he worked for, I believe it was nine months for 15 hours a day, and times he, he would just be weeping because he, he would look at what he just wrote and he said, that's not from me. I never would have said those things. And there they are. But, but what do you, what, what, one way that you can take, take this book and digest it better is to take each one of these five purposes and the ways that we've presented it and make each purpose your own. That is, put it in your own words. So his first purpose is that we were created for worship. And I, I look at that. Or another way he puts it is we were created for God's pleasure. And I, I look at that and I think, so how can that resonate with me? And it's really simple because I know where he got this stuff. He got it from the Great Commandment and the Great Commission. The entire book is simply the Great Commandment and the Great Commission. So the first purpose in this book and the first purpose of our lives is to simply love God. You see, when, when, when Chris is leading us in worship, he's, he's, he's presenting truths. Don't, didn't you love that last song, the one that he used to hate and now, now he loves, you see? God, God caught him at a time with that, with that song, same song, but he's in a different place, and now, now he loves that song. I have to confess, I thought it was hokey too. Uh, today, I really loved it, especially when I heard everyone singing. But you see, it, what, what, what we call our worship time, it gives us the opportunity to, to be reminded of who God is and to express our genuine love and appreciation for what he's done and what he's doing in our life. And then what I've done is with each one of these, I've, I've thought through what, what I can remember of, of Scripture and I, I've associated a verse with it. And I've done that with all five of these this, this morning. And when I, when I think about this, this purpose in, in my life, it, it drives me to this passage of Scripture from Ephesians chapter 3, where Paul tells the church at Ephesus, Christ is going to make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and, and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, say these words with me, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. And you might think that this is just about understanding, which I just kind of ridiculed a few minutes ago, right? But it's as we understand, as we begin to comprehend that. And we understand the depths to which he went to show us that. That we have this whole new appreciation and we sing out like we sang out earlier. He does. And so... The third thing that you can do, you, 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 can, you can rephrase these purposes in your own language. You can identify a passage of Scripture that, that resonates with you. I mean, Rick Warren, if he does nothing else, he just saturates us with Scripture. The, the appendix in this book, I mean, there are so many footnotes, and thank goodness he didn't include all the references in there because there are so many references that, that we'd never get through this book. And, but find one. That, that resonates with you. Find one that, 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 that speaks to your heart and your mind and where you're at today. And that might be something totally different than where you were five years ago. It might be totally different five years from now. It doesn't matter. Where are you at right now? And the third thing you can do with this, with these words, is to ask yourself, a question that a friend of mine likes to ask. So how's it going? So how's it going? You, you know what I'm getting at with that? 
my, uh, my, my, my friend and mentor, Chris Dolson, when, when he's preaching, he, he, he loves to, to say, how's, how's everybody doing? Just to make sure that, you know, we're, we're on the same page. So first of all, how's everybody doing? And he's looking for a few nods. But then there's a subtleness to that, and it's, now, how's it going on this? That is, let's say this. This is a, a question that, that former President Jimmy Carter faced, and maybe you can remember to pray for them as they're in their very last moments of life together. What, what caused him the biggest transformation in his spiritual life was a pastor asking him this question. If you were to be hauled into court and tried for your faith, would there be any evidence? If you say that you love God, is there any evidence in your life that that's the case? How's it going? All right. So do you, do you remember the, the, the chain of thinking in this book? It, first of all, it was this idea of, of loving God, and we, we, we come to know that, that we love God. And how do we respond to that? We respond by, by, by saying, God, thank you for your love. I give you my life. I remember when Debbie and I, not in this building, but we stood right here, and our pastor stood right where I am, and he said, do you take this woman to be your wife? And I said, I do. She said, do you take this man to be your husband? And Debbie said, I do. And this morning, for those of you who maybe have never heard this before and who think that maybe the way that, that you come to, uh, to, to a your love for God was something that, that your, your parents did for you in, in baptizing you or in dedicating you or in, in making sure that you go to Easter and Christmas with, with grandma and you sit in the family pew where they've always sat for, for years. You know, maybe that's what you think, but, but really it's like that marriage where right now, if you're going to, to check on how you're doing on this first purpose, that the question is, have you said, I do, to God? Have you said that? Those of you who are at home, have you come to that point in your life in understanding who God is and what he's done for you in, in Jesus Christ? And when, when, when he says, will you come and follow me? Have you said, I will? When he says, I love you, do you love me? You say, I do. And that's what scripture means when it says we, are, we, we need to be born again. That's when it happens, right at that point. And if you've never done that before, that can be today. And just say, I do. And when you, when you say that, multiple things happen. And the Holy Spirit comes into your life, and he begins to, to, to speak, not from the outside, but, but from, from within, and it changes the trajectory of your life. But moreover, you now are adopted. You're adopted as a child of God. And when you're adopted as a child of God, you enter into a new what? You enter into a new family. Thank you very much. And that, be, that takes us to that second, that second purpose. And as I've rephrased this, uh, Rick likes to talk about it as, as fellowship. I find that to be too churchy. But... I mean, to, to me, it's, it's, it's I, I was created, a purpose that I have in my life is to love the family of God. I had some, some great experiences growing up in church. I had a lot of bad experiences growing up in church, and I thought that I hated the family of God. And then I came to see what it's really supposed to be. And I love the family of God. I love the family of God that, that he has given to me. I love that I've been adopted into this thing, and we've all been adopted, and we're all like kids together, you know? And, uh, and 
Scripture has a remarkable number of, of little checkups on this to see how you're doing. 54 of them. They're called the one another's. I'm not going to show them all to you today, but I, I want to introduce you and, and encourage you if you, if you, if you do your, your Bible on, online, then, then use this and, and search for all the one another's in, in Scripture. Here are a few of them. Of course, love one another, and it's right there at the top because it's 16 times in, in the New Testament. But how are you doing at being devoted to other people in the body? It doesn't have to be everybody. In fact, it would be difficult to be deeply devoted to everyone, but the idea is to, to, to care and, and have this, this sense of, of awe when you get to stand with your other adopted sisters and brothers. How are you at honoring others within the body? Or in these days, how are you at living in harmony with one another who share maybe a different political party than you do or a different, a different perspective on a social issue than you do? That's one that I think every church needs to be working on. Here's a few more, and, uh, and we'll end with this slide. But build up one another. Build, build one another up, said multiple times in, in Scripture. What are you doing to encourage and, and to build other people up? Be like-minded toward one another. That, that deserves a whole message on its own, because what does that even mean? Right? I, I wanted to throw in some, some head scratchers so that, you know, see, when, when, when you're doing a checkup on yourself, you might not know what that, what that test is when, when it comes up on, on the doctor's report, the HBA1C, HGBA1C. What is that? And what, what, what's a good number for that? Be like-minded toward one another. What, what, what's that? And you dig into it and you ask yourself questions. See, this is, this is how you can how you can go deeper in, into this book. Accept one another. Whoa. He go back to live in harmony with one another. Accept one another even though they're different than you. You're not going to, you're probably not going to change their mind. You can enter into dialogue and try to understand each other and then accept them where they're at. And then scripture adds some don'ts don't lie to one another. Well, that's obvious. Stop passing judgment on one another. Around here amongst the staff, it's like, oh, I can't believe Dennis left those coffee grounds in the sink again. <laughs> you know? He's such a pig. No, we, we, we don't really talk like that. I'm just making that stuff up. <laughs> Some of them don't know. Or How about this? If you keep on biting and devouring each other, you'll be destroyed by each other. Don't slander one another. So these, these are checkups that, that, that Scripture gives you with regard to, to your second purpose. And uh, one of the things that I'd like to just remind you of that David said, one of the things that we do to celebrate when someone's adopted into the family of God is we have a baptism. Just like you were born through the waters of, of the birth canal, so you are born through the waters of baptism into uh, your new adopted family, and if you're interested in that, please, uh, please reach out to me. So, the question, how are you doing? Number three. We came up with this language last week, uh, changing things a little bit, because if we're adopted into a new family, then we, we have brothers and sisters, and the, the oldest brother in this family is our big brother, right? Uh, my, my big brother, David, uh, tends to watch from Hamburg, Germany. David, Big Dave. We call each other Big Dave, Big Don, Big Den. Uh, uh, but follow the lead of our big brother. My, my, my sister sent a picture of all of the boys laying, on the, uh, laying in the living room, my dad and uh, all, of, all of us, just the guys. And there I am laying on the sofa on my brother, my big brother's back. Oh, shut up. I'm, I'm talking to my phone, not someone calling in. It's an inanimate object. I can tell it to shut up. Sorry for those of you who don't like that language at home. 
Uh, follow the lead of our big brother and God's son, Jesus. That's what we're called to do. Paul says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Or John puts it this way in 1 John. This is my scripture that I attach to this. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Notice, it doesn't say, should say the things that Jesus said, but what? Can you say those words with me? Live their lives as Jesus did. But I'm not a carpenter. I don't, you know, I don't, it's, that's not what it's talking about, obviously, right? How are you doing? You see, one of the ways you can ask this question is to be involved in a small group. And I, it's been so fun to hear what some small groups have been doing lately uh, and <clears throat> hitting the pause button on what they've been studying and just taking time out for what we used to call body life. What, you know, just, just hanging together and, and saying, how's it going with you? And this could form an outline for a how's it going with you in our small groups. Or maybe you have a spiritual running partner. Maybe you don't like to do the whole group thing, but you're a little bit more of a, of a smaller group, a micro group kind of a person. And this is, this is great coffee shop conversation, isn't it? This is, this is great come on Wednesday morning to, to the gathering place and you don't have to sit where, where it's noisy. You, you can break off and go... go find a quiet corner with your spiritual running partner and say, hey, how are you doing with that? Or maybe it's, hey, you know what? I've asked that question of myself. Dennis asked that, that question on, on Sunday. And can I just confess something to you right now? See, these are ways that we can take this book from just being up here and make it here. How are you doing with that? The fourth purpose, uh, rephrased in, in my own language, is we were created to play our part in God's family. Everybody plays a part. Everybody has a role to play. This is not a spectator sport. This, remember, we, we, we determined that we were not going to be a church of entertainment. And I wish there was another way we could arrange the room so it's not in straight rows. Once Kathy Bakop arranged this, this room so it was in a horseshoe and it was really cool... It just doesn't work very well for what we're trying to do online because that's how I would rather do it so we could all see each other and I could just kind of, we could all be down here. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? But we all have a part to play in God's family. The scripture that I connect with this is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your questions about the special abilities the Spirit gives us, I don't want you to misunderstand this. God works in different ways. And this is now verse 6. But it's the same God who does the work in all of us. And will you say verse 7 with me aloud, please? A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. And this is what it means to play your part in God's family. It's good to have Bud Damagata back this morning after struggling with, uh, with some illness. Bud, I, I remember when you were a part of a, uh, of a class at another church where they were looking at your, your personal profile and, and your giftedness, and there was one word that, that stuck out uh, in, in their evaluation of you. Could, could you share that with me, please? Contentious. Contentious. <laughs> and, and you see... Now, some people might see that as, as being, being bad. But Socrates said that he was a gadfly in society. And another word for being a gadfly is being a pain in the butt. Um, now, I'm not suggesting that that's what contentious means. But, <laughs> but you know, but, but we, all, we all need that in our lives, don't we? We, we, we need, we need a, a, a contentious, not, not someone who just 
says, oh, yeah, everything's great. Every, oh, you're, 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 you're just perfect. Oh, yeah, 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 just, just keep going. No, we need a little bit of contentiousness. And I'm glad God brought contentious bud into my family. I'm not suggesting that's where you're at today, but... Do you, do you see where I'm going? We all have a part to play, not just with regard to spiritual gifts and abilities, but with, with regard to, to our experiences, our shape. Remember? Shape, spiritual gifts and abilities. Remember H, heart for passion. Remember A, we changed it from Warren's uh, abilities to availability. And then P, do you remember P? I don't. Help me. What was P again? No, that was heart. That was heart. P? Yes, 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 of course. Thank you. Our, our personality type. You know, some of us are introverted. Some of us are, are extroverted. And we mix that, that together. We, we become more empathetic toward others. And then E, our experience. All of those things go, go to figure in the part that you play in God's family. I have a question for you. How are you doing? Are you playing a part in God's family? I saw a whole new spiritual gift demonstrated today. You know, this, this guy up here who, who plays the bass, every once in a while you'll hear his deep voice. But then he comes over here, and someone was going to play foosball with me, uh, but Bruce kind of nudged me aside and grabbed on, and this dude like kicks butt in foosball. And, I mean, this is, this, is, this is a thing. Now, you might say, well, what does this have to do with anything? Well, it takes me to my fifth point, but before I go there, I just want to say, look for a place to serve within God's family because we need you. And I am so grateful. I counted today. There were I think there were four or five people in the room who responded to a taste of service at River Hills, those, those things that you see in the back there. Five people in the room today who were doing something new, who were taking a taste for just, just a couple of months, trying it out for the first time. Wasn't it nice to see Diane on the keyboard today? I have, I have one person. Do you, do you remember the, uh, the slides that, that we showed um, last week? Uh, and, and, and the video. I had more people respond to this than I've ever had anyone respond to, to a call for volunteers. And, and one of those volunteers uh, said to me, oh, I shouldn't say volunteer, we're trying to get that word out of our vocabulary. Uh, I, I talked to, to, to one of these servants today about how it was going, and she said, oh, it just feels like I found my place. That is so cool. How are you doing? I found my place. And those of you who are online with us, don't think that you can't serve because you can serve. We mentioned that we have somebody 125 miles away mixing the sound for us right now. We, we, you, 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 there are so many things. There are so many things that you could be doing no matter where you live. And you could serve within the kingdom, if not with us, with a church in your area. Finally, the fifth purpose for which we were created. Spread his love in the world. See, purpose four, play your part in God's family, is about ministry. Remember that, that word? And we, we defined last week ministry as in, in reach. And when we spread his love in the world, this is outreach. And the scripture I put with this is uh, either... Matthew 28, the very last paragraph of that, but preferably Acts, Acts 1. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. This is Jesus talking to you. And you will be my witnesses. You will be the, the, the people who, who, who tell my story. You will tell my story, telling people about me everywhere, even to the ends of the earth. And I come back to the foosball table. Because... One of the disciplines we have to start getting into now is breaking this room down so that we can make this a youth center during the week. There was a time when River Hills had another building and, 
and we could go uh, in another place in our building. We called it Backstage. And you know, when, when we were running Backstage, we had 70 junior and senior high school kids coming to Backstage. When we ran the loft, we, we had a similar number coming, and, and the city started saying, um, uh, you, you're exceeding fire violations. But when we were back in the building over here, we weren't exceeding fire violations. And, and we, we, we need to do these things. You see, because God is calling us to, to share his love with everyone in the community. We saw over the last couple of weeks how the church in uh, Maui ha has been doing this. And I just want to say thank you to, uh, to those of us who were able to, to give. Uh, not only did we help su supply uh, vegetable crates, but also fresh water to people who don't have access to, to that water. And so thank you, River Hills, for your part in showing that love and helping the uh, Pukalani Community Church of the Nazarene on Maui to, to show that love to people and I love what they say in, in this ad. It says, anyone and everyone affected by the fires in any way, please come by. They're, they're saying, this isn't just about taking care of our own. This is about taking care of, of everyone. And so please, be a part of this. And we had an opportunity to help. You see, this is what it means. This is what it means to spread his love in the world. And how are we doing? How are you doing? As, as a church, we have to be thinking seriously about how we're going to reach kids in this community who are struggling. I was talking with one person who was stepping up to, to serve this, this, this week, and she, she said, oh, man, 70 is fantastic. But there are hundreds and we have to wrap our minds around that. The churches in our, our community are, are barely, barely scratching the surface of our student population. And if God has blessed us multiple times in the past, could he bless us again? Could he give us the opportunity to reach more kids than we have reached in the past? If 70 was what we reached in the past, could we reach 100? What do you think? Could we do that? And that's going to take us to one more thing about how are you doing. We realized two weeks ago, you were in the first service, two weeks ago I had to bring out the, the site plans for our future development because we're out of room in the second service and we have to figure out what we're going to do. And if we're going to bring 100 kids in, we've got to figure out how we're going to do that. So I just want to put that out there to you at the question, how are we doing? All right. So, as fast as we can, first purpose. This is, this is to avoid the piece of paper. What's the first purpose? All right. What's the second purpose? The good. Love the family of God. What's the third purpose? Follow the lead of our big brother and God's son, Jesus. You guys are Kill him. Did you write? Did you? Did you? Okay. I love you. I love you. Fourth purpose. Oh, oh, wait. Don't look at the screen. Play your part in God's family. Yeah. And the fifth purpose. The fifth purpose. Spread his love to whom? The world. But isn't, isn't the world at odds with the church? Yeah, but. But what? For God. Yeah. Yeah. Let's pray together. Lord God, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you so much that you didn't just create us like a, a clock that you wound up and let it go, but you, you, you care about us. You intimately uh, communicate with us and that you, you gave us purpose. And God, I'm holding this, this sledgehammer head in my hand, but... So many of us feel like we're, we're this, but we're, we're just missing something. And God, for those who may have never said yes to following, to following you, to following Jesus in their life, I pray that they'll know that, that when they do that, it's like adding a handle to this. 
and it totally changes everything. And it gives a sense of purpose and direction and mission in our lives. And God, for those of us who need to be reminded of that, God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to ask that question, how are you doing? And we will ask that question of each other. How are you doing? And we'd ask that, that question in our small groups. How are we doing? We'd ask that, that, that question of, of other leaders that, that we're friends with. How are you doing? And we'd mean it not at a superficial level, but at these deep levels. God, send us from this place to be a church that's doing for you. And we pray it in Jesus' name. And those who agreed said, amen. Hey, thanks for your attention to God's word and have a great rest of the week.